Hey everybody, my name is Toby. Welcome to my channel, Tales from the Treadmill. Here we talk about my past addiction issues, uh, my road to recovery, and then now my the light that I found in sobriety. Um, today is a good day. It's Saturday morning. I thought I'd jump on here and do a video on uh, the the wreck that I got in was involved in with an 18 wheeler uh, back when I was 20 years old. I mentioned it in a in another video. And I had several people reach out saying that they would like to hear the story. So I thought I'd jump on here today and tell the story. So uh, if you're new here, again, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, hey, thanks for hanging out with me and listening to these tales from this treadmill. Um, so, but first of all, I just wanted to start with a kind of a tip. I think I'm going to start doing some tips because I, I feel like now that I'm almost three years sober, um, I can look back on the seven years, the past seven years from 2013 to almost 2020, where I had decided to try and become sober. Um, and uh, it took me seven years to get here. Uh, and it was rough. I mean, it was a tough thing. I kept going. I kept kind of backsliding because I was a bartender and um, I've talked about that in my other videos, but I figured, you know, there were some things, some steps that I took along the way. I've had a lot of people ask me, how did you get sober? And honestly, I think I did it the hard way uh, because I never sought help from from like professionals. I never went to rehab. I did ask some really great friends of mine uh, to help me out and they took me in, you know, John and Teresa, some of my best friends, uh, my buddy Brandon and his wife took me in for a little while as well during that road to recovery. That was back from like, you know, in the, in the mid 2000s to the late 2000s. So 2005 to 2009 area. Um, but what I'm talking about is from 2013 on where I had actually decided, okay, I'm going to stop drinking because <clears throat> alcohol was my first battle and it was my last battle. Um, so that's the hardest thing that I ever had to try and stop was alcohol. So I think I'm going to start doing some tips because I feel like I've, I've got a lot of things that helped me get to where I am now. So one of the tips that I wanted to say was, you know, um, what I started doing, it's almost like manifesting. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys are into that, but I, I do believe in that and I am into that and think I've seen it work. Um, so what I was doing was when I, I was working at the bar as a bartender, it was real easy for me to drink, uh, back in those days. Um, and I took advantage of that, unfortunately, as much as I possibly could. Uh, but when I decided to stop drinking and I would, I would go months at a time doing great. And then I would mess up and backslide. But what I was doing in those long stints of time, uh, while I was at the bar, I always had people wanting to do shots with me or wanting to drink with me, right, you know, and all that kind of, it's cool. I get that, you know, but, um, but what I started doing was, and it's kind of my tip for today is I just started telling everybody, Hey, I don't drink anymore. You know, um, I stopped, I quit. And, you know, people always looked at me puzzled, like what, why, you know? Um, but even though I wasn't, even though I still was <laughs> drinking or I, you know, backslid, like I said, I think I said it enough in my, you know, out loud to people. And I even remember thinking, man, one of these days I'm going to say I don't drink anymore and it's actually going to be a reality. And I'm actually here now. So that's what I'm saying. I think you manifest things, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I just thought I'd share that. And there's some other, a bunch of tips that I have that I've that I've done to maintain my sobriety and and that I look back on and I go, oh, yeah, I was doing that to, to try and get here. So I think I'm gonna start sharing those, uh, you know, when I can. So let's get into the 18 wheeler story. So I was 20 years old. This was back in 1993. <laughs> uh, I was, I had gotten a job at Guitar Center uh, in Dallas. Um, it's, it's right off of Spring Valley and the Dallas North Tollway if you're from here. There's a huge, it's where, there's a huge engagement ring store there now. That's the actual building that the Guitar Center was in. Now, this particular Guitar Center that I worked in when I was 20, uh, that's also where I met the singer for Jibe and the bass player that was going to be our bass player for the first four years of the band. It's where Jibe really got started was at that Guitar Center. Um, so what ended up happening was uh, I had woken up and I was running late to work. Uh, that day. So I'll never forget this day because, you know, when you have a brush with death like this, you don't forget, you remember every single detail of what happened, right? So I remember very clearly that day I called Guitar Center. I think I was supposed to be there at 10 a.m. and I wasn't going to be able to get there till noon. I can't remember the reason why, 
maybe I overslept. I don't know. Uh, I was 20. You know what I mean? Um, but I did call them and I said, Hey, I'm running late. Uh, is it okay if I come in at noon? And they were like, sure. You know, so, and it was, it was like maybe 11 in the morning. So I had a little bit of time. It was about a 20 minute drive for me straight up the highway. Um, so I took my time, you know, I got ready. I did, you know, what I needed to do, shaved, you know, brushed my teeth, did all that good stuff. I get in my car. Now this car that I had, I had worked my tail off at Wet n Wild as a lifeguard for $3.35 an hour. That was what I was saving people's lives for at Wet n Wild. Uh, that was what minimum wage was, and that's how much I was making. I worked my tail off all summer when I was 16 uh, to save. My dad said, you know, if you save a, a bunch of money, I'll match what you have and we'll get you a car. And so I was all about it. I was working double shifts. I was doing what I could to get this car. So I ended up getting this Dodge Charger. It was navy blue. I loved it. It was a beautiful car, my first car. Um, I'm sure there's a picture of it somewhere, and there's actually a picture that I know exists of the wrecked uh, version <laughs> that happened after this. So anyway, I go jump in that uh, blue Dodge Charger, and I start driving into Wet n Wild. Now, I got on uh, 635 uh, here and uh, from Mesquite going into Dallas. In, uh, here in Texas. I know if you're not from Texas, you're probably going, I don't know any of these highways. But anyway, so I'm on the, 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 the whole thing is I get onto the highway, right? And there was a wreck. Like as soon as I got on the highway, there was obviously traffic had slowed down because um, there was a wreck up ahead, up ahead, you know? So it's bumper to bumper on the highway. So I'm just going and there's an 18 wheeler to my left, you know, and I'm surrounded by cars. So uh, we all are going at a slow pace, 10, 15 miles per hour. And then I guess the wreck got cleared and about a half mile up the road, we started getting up to, you know, where things were getting back up to 50, 55, 60 miles an hour. And I'm just driving, minding my business, but traffic is still super tight because we had just, you know, sped up from this wreck. So there's car, I'm, I'm surrounded. There's an 18 wheeler here. There's a car in front of me, car behind me, a van to my right, and clear memory of this 18-wheeler, no blinker, nothing, just started merging over into my lane, and I'm in the middle of the, the, the cab is up here, then back here, I'm, I'm in the middle of this thing. It just starts merging into my lane, like coming over, and I'm like, uh, what is going on? So I just tried to speed up, but there's a car in front of me, and they sped up. I couldn't slow down. There was a car behind me. I couldn't go into the next lane over. There was a car next to me. I'm trapped. And this guy is coming and he ain't stopping. And I'm, you know, I, I'm at this point probably yelling profanities, I'm sure. Um, so I'm, I step on the gas trying to go like the guy in front of me. The guy in front of me goes and I, I see it. It's coming. The cab of this truck hits my front end of my car. It takes my car and does this. I'm going to do this with my hand. So here it is. It comes and hits my car. My car does this. As it's pushing me down the highway sideways, I have this matte grill in my face, and I'm telling you guys, I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like this where you think it's over. When they say that your life flashes in front of your eyes, it truly does. I, vivid memories were of people and images of my mom and people were just flashing through my head, and it was almost as if, no, it was as if I was saying goodbye because I knew that this was not going to end well. I'm being pushed sideways down the freaking highway by this 18 wheeler and he ain't slowing down. This guy, oh my God. So what happens is he pushes me over. So there's four lanes. He's in the third lane, right? Uh, so, so if it's, he's over next to the median, there's a lane, then the median, he's in the lane next to the lane of the median. I'm in the second lane. Well, he takes, my car does this, pushes me down sideways, go, goes right through me, right? He barrels through me. I hit another car, flipped around this way, hit another car, flipped back around the other way. And I'm telling you guys, I remember it. I, I mean, while I'm saying this, I'm envisioning it because I, it, it never leaves you, right? It never leaves you. So my car ends up facing traffic. It hits the median. And, I st and I'm doing this. And it stopped. <laughs> Sorry, I almost fell off the treadmill here. And it stopped uh, finally. And when it did... I just, I was braced. I was just clenching. I was braced. I was like, and I kind of opened my eyes and I'm like, holy shit, I am alive. I couldn't believe it. I, I was shocked. Um, so I look and, and my, I'm turned in my car like this because he had demolished 
the driver's side front end up until like where it started to come into the uh, uh, you know where I was it, it was demolished uh, but it was bent in and I was literally crushed in because the door was kind of crushed in so I tried to open the door it wouldn't open <laughs> so I started <laughs> kicking the door trying to hit the door and it finally it, it swung open I got out of the car okay I just I was in shock first of all I just remember getting out of the car and walking away from the car right and I walked maybe 20 feet, and I mean, I'm still, I can't believe I'm alive, y'all. Uh, I was just like, just in complete shock. I turn around, I I look at my car, and it looks like it, it was demolished, like the front end was completely crushed in. It looked like whoever was in there did not survive. That's what it looked like. And I sat down on the median and just waited. And I, I'll never forget, <laughs> this is the first time that I ever saw an actual cell phone, y'all. <laughs> I'm totally dating myself here. But people pulled over because they saw what happened. And, and people, so the, 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 there's one guy in particular pulled up to me, pulled over, pulled up, and he said, hey, first of all, I saw the entire thing. I'm going to give you my information. You know, you can you call me whatever you need. Have anyone call me. And he goes, you need to call somebody right now. And I'm like in my... Complete shock. I probably need to call my mom. You know what I mean? Like, I just almost died. I, just, <laughs> I immediately wanted to talk to my mom, of course, you know. Um, and so he goes, well, here, check it out. He had one of those big cell, like, it was one of those block cell phones that they had. He had that in his vehicle. And I, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> and he, he's like, oh, you can use this to call your mom. I was like, you can call, I can call somebody on that thing? <laughs> uh Anyway, I'll never forget, I called my mom, and I was just calm. Mom, hey, hey, well, is everything okay? Well, I got into an accident uh, on the highway. And she's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I got, I got uh, hit by a truck, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm okay. And she's like, you got hit by a truck? And I go, yeah, this 18-wheeler. 18-wheeler? <laughs> I should have <laughs> I should have done some more padding for my mom. You got hit by it? Oh my gosh, she frantically, where are you? And I looked and I could see that I was right before the Preston exit. I mean, I almost made it because <laughs> that's where I exited to go to work. My mom's like, oh, my God, I'm on your, you need to call your dad. I'm on my way. My mom goes and jumps in the car. I'll never forget this. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. I sat down on the median. Uh, I called my dad or maybe my mom called my dad. That's a little blurry. Somebody, either I called my dad or my mom did. My dad worked right there at a company uh, right there by uh, a couple exits up. So he was pretty close. So I think my mom may have called him. Um, but I'm sitting there on the median, and traffic now has basically almost come to a standstill. There was only one lane that was kind of slowly going by, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting, and here comes the fire truck, right? So fire truck comes along, and uh, the firemen, they jump out of their car, and they come running up, and they're like, Hey, did the ambulance already get here and take the guy or take the person away that was in the car? And I'm like, I'm the person that was in the car. And I was standing. They're like, oh, my God, are you okay? Because this car, I'm telling you all, looked freaking demolished. And I'm like, you know what? My back hurts a little bit. But, I mean, look, I'm alive. I, I mean, yeah, I, I can't believe it either, you know. Uh, ambulance shows up. Police cars show up. All that good stuff. Um and the one funny kind of thing about it is, as I'm watching the traffic slowly going by, I see Joe, the singer for Jibe. <laughs> we hadn't even started Jibe yet, y'all. He, he Here he is, because I knew his car. He comes, you know, driving by and looking at me like he was going to work, too. He's like, he worked at Guitar Center, right? So, with me. So, he's like going, what? And I'm like, I pointed at the car, and he, you know, he kept going to work. And almost, the way I look at that, too, is almost a foreshadowing of what was to come in my life. So, <laughs> I'm glad I can laugh about it now because it was one of the most terrifying experiences ever. So, anyway, what ends up happening is, next thing you know, this all felt like it happened two minutes. But I'm sure there was a period of time here because, I'm like I said, I'm in shock. But next thing you know, I look across the highway on the service road, and my mom is over there jumping up and down. Toby! Toby! God rest her soul. God love her. 
I mean, she's over there jumping up and down. She can't get to me. I don't know how she figured out how to get all the way over there and found me. I, I just, I, I can't. <laughs> it just boggles my mind. But that's our mom, man. She, she was like Wonder Woman. She was like super, superhuman. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, the cops come up and they say, "Hey, come and sit back in our car with us. We want to talk to you for a minute." So I sat in the back of the cop car, and they're like, "Hey, man." you realize how lucky you are to be alive right now? They're like, you know, and the one cop says, I shouldn't call them police officers. Uh, the one police officer says, you know, only one in like 4,900 and some odd people survive these 18 wheeler accidents every year. And I'm like, well, oh, that's fun to know right now. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I felt completely lucky that I was alive and all that. So, Next thing you know, my dad pulls in and pulls up, and, and I get into his car, and he takes me home, and, you know, somber conversation, uh, still in complete shock about what happened, obviously had to call into work, <laughs> so, um, I'm sure Joe probably told him something when they went there, like, holy crap, you know, um, told me it was an accident, but I ended up going home, and I just remember in the following days, just being, like, dumbstruck, kind of. Uh, I, I, I had a clear revelation in that moment, though, that I remember I was taking a walk at Eastfield College with a friend of mine, a couple friends of mine, talking about what happened and just kind of bewildered at the fact that I was still alive after this whole thing happened. And I'll never forget thinking, you know what, man, <laughs> after that experience, I'm going for it. Whatever I'm here to do, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be in a, a musician in a band. I'm supposed to be here because I'm still here. So that was the, it was a very clear moment where I was like, no, I'm sticking to my guns and I'm playing music and I'm going for it. I'm going to do what I want to do because I could, I could not be here right now. Right. It was a very moment, a big moment of clarity for me. But, uh, the aftermath of that was not pretty. Um, I should have sued, sued, we should have sued the shit out of the 18 wheeler company. Cause, cause, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the guy, the 18 wheeler, he ends up slowing down and he's like a hundred yards up the road, pulled over and he comes walking up. You know, hadn't shaved, obviously, in like eight days. Looked like he was probably high on trucker speed. It was clearly his fault. I had witnesses that uh, saw it. They gave me their numbers. I was too naive and ignorant at that time. You would think at 20 I would know better. But, but uh, you know, I didn't know what to do, and I didn't really have any guidance to... Uh, to uh, you know, um, to sue them. I remember an insurance adjuster coming over to the house, and that got the insurance adjuster. My mom and I were sitting there, and I remember the insurance adjuster. He it was their insurance, and he said, "Yeah, we know it's his fault. They knew it was his fault, right?" So, <laughs> so they they come back and they offer us a check for seventeen hundred dollars, and that's what we got. And I never sued them. And I, I mean, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. Because, I mean, I could have sued them and taken them for all they were worth. But you know what? You live and you learn. Hopefully that never happens again, obviously. I would never want that to happen to anybody I know or myself. But, I mean, man, talk about missing a moment there where, you know, uh, it could have been a, uh, a point where I could have, you know, used some, some of those funds to probably go to the doctor and... <laughs> <laughs> had my back, my back checked out. I had some lower back problems throughout the years, but hey, whatever. It's all good. I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining about that. Um, it just is what it is, and uh, yeah, that's just what happened. So that's my 18 wheeler story, and I'm sticking to it, y'all. Uh, <laughs> again, thank you uh, for joining me on this road to recovery. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, again, it's Saturday. I'm probably going to take the day off tomorrow. It's supposed to rain. We're supposed to go to the drag races. But they're saying it's supposed to rain, so I don't know. But look, guys, again, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday, a wonderful rest of your weekend. And uh, Monday, I'll get back on it. It's really the last part of the, the uh, Road to Recovery story <clears throat> before I start my sobriety videos, and I'm so excited about that. All right, you guys have a good rest of your weekend. Talk to you soon. Oh, I'm going to use this thing. It didn't work. <laughs>